Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you all. I'm going to ask that uh, you turn on your camera so we can see you. Today, we're going to have a rather informal uh, discussion. So one of the things that we're doing um, in our um, mission to help as many practitioners as we can is we want to have a monthly gathering and discussion of important topics that are relevant to you, that are relevant to growing your business and growing your practice. So today our topic is going to be how to create the right energy centers and focus on the right energy centers uh, in your business. So there's really seven energy centers of a successful practice that I've discovered over the years. And I want to have a discussion around those because I want to make sure that you are successful in growing your practice. So. Uh, let's get settled in, let's turn our cameras on, let's engage, let's participate. This is a more of a community meetup is how I want you to look at it versus a webinar or a presentation. I do have some slides just to help uh, guide our conversation, but I'm going to ask you to participate so that we can get the most out of our time together. So go ahead and uh, feel free to turn your cameras on and we're going to engage and participate. That's how you're going to get the most out of this. And um, that's how we're gonna help support and and really create community with one another. I know this is a important uh, topic of discussion and I know that your business is important and that's why you're here right now. So thank you for playing full out, for participating and engaging in dialogue. It uh, It's really gonna be a powerful, thought exercise for us to go through today. And we're going to be able to identify where we can improve and where we can optimize and how we can be of greater service to those around us and those that need us. So uh, what I'd always like to do with any, any trainings that I do or any conversations that I have is really start with uh, intention and gratitude. So go ahead and type into the chat what you're most grateful for. I'm always curious as to what's going on in your life, where you're winning, and this is an important skill. Gratitude is actually a skill that we need to develop, uh, especially as we grow our practices, because there's going to be many ups and downs and bumps along the way. And it's important that we're able to look back on a consistent basis and see where we are winning. So go ahead and type in what you're most grateful for. Let's celebrate together as a community. It could be something big. It could be something small. It could be the weather. It could be your comfortable bed. It could be even finding community like you were going to do today. So go ahead and type that into the chat and give yourselves just a few moments to go ahead and type that in. I'll tell you what I'm grateful for. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yesterday was my grandmother's birthday and she is such a lovely woman. I'm so grateful for her. She raised me for the first, uh, about, uh, seven months of my life. And, uh, my mom dropped me off uh, took me to India to visit them and they insisted that I stay there. So they played a very influential role in my life. My grandfather has uh, since passed on last year. He, um, you know, left his, his mortal coil, if you will. And uh, so my grandmother, this is her first uh, birthday uh, by herself. So I'm grateful for her. I get to see her later on today. Um, some of you are grateful for family. Okay, let's be more creative. You know, let's think about something that we are grateful for in our business. Let's think about something, perhaps a milestone uh, that we accomplished. And it's of course important that we're grateful for our family, but let's let's focus on what we're grateful for in our business. And I'll share a, a business win for me. We hired a new staff member who's going to act as a concierge for our clients, and she's super. Uh, excited and I'm super excited to have an extra set of hands and a, another heart to pour into our business. All right, cool. So gratitude, again, is a skill that we all must need to develop. And it, you might be asking, what does this have to do with the energy center? Well, you'll learn a little bit later on that it is an important um, thing for us to focus on on a daily and regular basis. There's a book written by... Um, Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan, it's called a gap in the game. And uh, Dan Sullivan is one of the top entrepreneurial coaches in the world. And what he finds is typically entrepreneurs have a hard time celebrating. Type in me if you're somebody who doesn't celebrate often enough. Go ahead and type that into the chat and, uh, you know, at least acknowledge that, right? You know, I think for a lot of people, 
it's something that we don't do because we always are focused on the tasks ahead, the horizon ahead, and we forget to look back and see how far we've come. It's almost like climbing the mountain and never looking over your shoulder to see the view and how far you've come. So we want to make sure that we're celebrating throughout our week and even throughout today as we go through some of these important topics. Another question I always like to know who's here. So if you could just mention in the chat, how long have you been in practice? Maybe you're just starting out. Maybe you're still learning about functional medicine. Maybe you've been in practice for zero to one years. Maybe you've been in practice longer than that, but, uh, Regardless of where you are, it's just important for me to know so I can guide the conversation accordingly. All right, Lisa is just starting. Awesome, Lisa. Lisa, I'm going to ask you to unmute, uh, if you would, and I'd love to know a little bit more about your journey. So tell me a little bit more about where you are and what you're, what you're so excited about when it comes to functional medicine. Well, I think everything that we've learned in the past brings us to the present and so I had been on a healing journey for myself, and I just knew with the, the steps that I did, I could help others. And I, I have always been um, you know, intrigued with you know, functional medicine, alternative medicine. I do that in my own practice as a physical therapist. And Sachin, when I, um, I think I was on your first webinar for me in February, I'm like, oh, this is exactly what what I've been looking for, or like my vision as I started thinking, like, can I transition from my hands-on physical therapy practice to helping people in a more holistic way where I can talk about topics, um, you know, kind of like what you're talking about, your seven pillars. So that is where I am at, and I'm joining you um, this summer. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome. I, uh, I'm super excited. I think, uh, you know, as a chiropractor, I've worked with uh, many physical therapists and mm -hmm. I think functional medicine is a perfect uh, adjunct and modality because many people, especially, uh, those that are struggling with, you know, aches and pains can benefit from cleaning up their diet, their lifestyle, oh, optimizing their sleep. So mm -hmm. it's such well, a, it's such a perfect compliment. Exactly. I mean, when you start looking at, you know, people's chart, they're just not coming in with back pain or pain. You realize they have fibromyalgia, they have lupus, they have some type of chronic inflammation going on. And it's again, that lifestyle medicine that is going to be so important. What you talk about. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to have you on board. Cool. Who else? Uh, let's see, I see some of you haven't typed in your responses yet. So go ahead and let me know where you are. I see Janet is restarting. So I'm going to ask Janet to unmute here and share a little bit more about your journey, Janet. should see a unmute button. There you go. I've tried again. It worked this time. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, I had started out, I used to be uh, a physician. Um, I can't be licensed in North America. So I decided to reinvent myself as a functional medicine health coach. And I began the training. Um, but then a whole series of um, untoward events overtook me. I had an accident, then I had COVID, then I had long COVID, then my husband got ill and then my husband died. So I'm really just restarting. So I'm back into um, the training module and I should be fully board certified by this time next year. Okay. Well, so in it's... the meantime, I'm a lifestyle coach, but um, I, I am a fully qualified coach, yes. Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing your story and, and your journey. And, and um, it's amazing how when we find something we love, that obstacles and circumstances will present themselves, but we will mm -hmm. always That's very find true. our way, find yeah. our way. <laughs> so true. welcome. And thank you. Thank you for being here. And you're part of some of our other communities. So it's great to see you here as well. Okay. So lots of inspiring folks. And um, Lots to cover today. So again, I want to, I want this to be a open dialogue and conversation. I want us to get to know each other. So that's the objective for today. If you do not plan on participating, then I'm just going to be very honest. Don't be here. Okay. So this is designed to be participatory and, you know, you can always watch the recording 
if you're not going to participate, but I want you to be here. I want you to spend some time with us today and get to know each other. And I'd love to get to know you as well. It's, uh, I want you to think of this as being in a room full of people and imagine that person that's, you know, not paying attention. We don't want you to be that person. So if you can get on your, uh, turn your cameras on and let's see each other's beautiful faces. We don't get to see enough faces of people who are on a similar journey and path as us. So that's uh, what the goal and objective is here today. All right. So next thing I want to talk about is, is what is your biggest challenge? That's the next question I have for you is what is a challenge that you're facing that prompted you to be here on a day like today when you could be doing anything else? Some of you are up early. Some of you are in the middle of your day. Some of you are, uh, you know, maybe at towards the end of your day, but what's the biggest challenge that you're facing in your business right now. I'd love to know that because hopefully we can guide and steer the conversation in such a way that we can help you uh, resolve that. So go ahead and type that in. Maybe it's getting new clients. Maybe it's finding motivation. Maybe it's putting your program together. Maybe it's generating referrals. There's lots of different challenges that we might be facing. And I'd love to know what that is for you. So I'll give you a moment and go ahead and type that into the chat. Okay, time management, that's a big one. Finding time, okay. Too many platforms, yeah, there's lots of things that compete for our attention and a lot of things that compete for our focus. So. One of the skills that we need to develop as entrepreneurs, especially in a highly distractible world, which is competing for our attention and focus, is we need to develop the superpower of focus. So this is actually a, a skill, again, <laughs> uh, just like many other skills that we'll talk about today, but the ability to focus is something that we need to be able to uh, develop because Everything around us, including school, teaches us how not to focus. And so when, even when you, if any of you have children, you might know that, you know, children have a hard time focusing many times, right? And the reason is because they're not trained or taught how to actually focus. So uh, it's something that we need to develop. So a really simple tool uh, that I can provide for all of you is an exercise that I do, uh, I would say five to six, uh, sometimes seven nights out of the week. And it's, it's called Tatraka, which is a Ayurvedic practice. And basically what you do is you light a candle and you do this for about three minutes and you can go longer, but uh, you set up about a three minute timer. And what you're gonna start off by doing is lighting that candle and in a dark room, completely dark is ideal. You're going to just stare at that candle. You uh, Once you're, you know, safely positioned and comfortably positioned to look at the candle. You want to keep it at about eye level or so. You're going to rub your arms together and, or, or your hands, really. You're going to rub your hands together for about five seconds and heat them up. And then you're going to gently place them over your eyes. And you'll do that for about three to five seconds. And then you're going to soften your gaze and stare at the candle. Okay. You'll stare at the flame of the candle. And what this does is it actually helps you develop a part of your brain that helps you focus. Another thing that you can do, you could do this in the morning, you could do this in the evening. Um, you could also practice proper breathing. When we are breathing correctly, we are more focused. And of course, things like meditation are also going to be helpful in helping us develop the skill set of focus. All right. Lisa saying, putting a program together for my idea and in my head to an actual program journey for my client. Okay, awesome. We'll talk about that today. All right. So time management is really priority and focus management. Okay. It really is priority and focus management. So when somebody says, I don't have time, what they're, what they're telling me is that I need to really work on my priorities and my focus. Okay, so time is a valuable and really our most valuable non-renewable resource. So it's important that we learn how to properly manage it, okay, and prioritize it. We invest time and we devote time. So it's important to look at where you're spending your time as a source of investment. Now, sometimes uh, some people will um, spend time doing things that are not productive, 
and you know not filling their their love cup if you will so make sure you're doing that there's uh, an exercise that i learned about from genius network and it's called super happy fun days and super happy fun days are where you don't do any work on your business but you work on yourself you do the things that bring you joy and that's often when we get our biggest and best ideas okay and you surround yourself with the right people as you'll learn today what other challenges are you facing aside from time go ahead and type that in okay somebody says referrals we'll talk about that today uh, consistency okay that's definitely something that's important in our business okay avoiding distractions yeah okay everyone's trying to get your attention because your focus is actually uh, one of your most powerful skills what we focus on expands and of course, people want you focused on their stuff because they want their stuff to expand. So you've got to focus on your stuff so that your stuff, your programs, your health, your business can expand. Okay. Awesome. So if you come up with any other challenges you're facing, go ahead uh, and type those in as we keep moving along today. All right. As always, I'm going to ask you to be present, be here now, participate, engage as much as you can. I know some of you might be driving, some of you might uh, you know, uh, not be in a position to turn your cameras on, but at least participate in the chat, okay? What I'm gonna share with you today, I've learned from many mentors, people that have helped me along the way, and my commitment to my mentors is that I'm always gonna pay it forward, okay? So what I'm learning and what I've learned over the years is through my own experiences, but also from learning uh, from other individuals. So you're gonna hear a lot of uh, content today, and some of it's gonna come from these people who have helped me along the way. Now, in any practice, there's three key objectives that we always wanna stay focused on, okay? So the uh, first objective is we wanna create superior clinical outcomes for our clients. We never wanna compromise that. We wanna create positive financial outcomes uh, for your practices, and we wanna create personal health and happiness for you. One of my mentors, uh, Howard Partridge, who actually used to run the, or he still does actually, he runs the Zig Ziglar organization's uh, small business, um, you know, uh, coaching. And so he was actually one of the first business coaches that I hired. And one of the things that he says is your business should be a vehicle for you to live your best life. Okay. Your business should be a vehicle for you to live your best life. And in some cases, most people's businesses result in them not living their best life, right? It compromises their families, their relationships. It may compromise them financially, it may compromise their happiness. So we never want to create a business that moves us away from our own personal health and happiness, because you're not going to be able to do it very long if you're sick and tired. And we don't want to be sick and tired because we're supposed to help people not feel sick and tired. So we can't be in that position ourselves. So these are the three objectives that your practice should have. Okay. So when we think about energy centers, all of these energy centers should help us create better outcomes for our clients, our practice, and of course, for ourselves personally. Okay. We want the people around us to also love our business as well. Okay. We want, uh, like, you know, for me, for example, I want my son to be an entrepreneur, uh, should he choose to be. And so I have to set up, I have to be a role model for him to show him the positive benefits of being an entrepreneur. I can't have him hating my business. I have to have him loving what my business does for me personally and for my family. And of course, for my community. Okay. Does everyone agree with this? Go ahead and type in yes. If these are some of your key objectives as well when you're building your business. Okay, awesome. So you're in the right place, okay? There is a five freedoms that I often talk about, and I always like to reiterate those because it's a gentle reminder. So these five freedoms are the freedoms upon which we, the bedrock upon which we build our business. And, you know, it didn't start off this way for me because I didn't know what I wanted. But when you know what you want, it's easier to say yes, and it's so much easier to say no. So I make decisions based on, do does this task or does this project move me closer in the direction of living out these five freedoms? Do I become a better, healthier version of myself? 
Does it make me emotionally sound and happy? Does it allow me to scale my time? Okay, so an example could be, um, you know, working on a project that allows me to leverage my time. So if I'm doing education or if I'm doing training or if I'm putting together a project, is it something that can live in perpetuity, right? So for example, this training is something that is being recorded. And because it's being recorded, I can share this into the future, right? So this is leveraging my time. There's, you know, several people on this uh, presentation that are here live, you know, so it's leveraging my time instead of having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So where can your time be best leveraged in your business? And literally I could be doing this from anywhere with people who are from anywhere. So it provides me geographic freedom. And then of course, financial freedom uh, comes when you're energizing the seven energy centers we're going to be talking about today. And we want our business to provide us with, provide us with financial freedom. Okay. Because that's the whole point. So let's go through these energy centers and we'll have a open dialogue and discussion around them. So again, feel free to contribute to this conversation. All right. So energy center, number one, no surprise is you. Okay. You are energy center. Number one, you are the foundation upon which your business will be built. And so what does that mean? There's a, a few things and this in and of itself could be an hour long conversation. So we're not going to spend an hour talking about all the things that you can do, but I want you to realize that everything stems from within you, all the ideas, how you problem solve, how you uh, navigate through challenges that you're going to face. It all starts with you. And so you've got to have a centered energy, right? So Number one is become a product of your product. It's so much easier to offer what we have to offer to the world if we are a byproduct and a benefactor of it. Okay, it's so much easier for me to sell coaching and mentorship to practitioners if I myself am doing the things that are leading to success. It's so much easier to help people get healthy and find their path towards health if they see it in you. Okay. If you're climbing Mount Everest, would you ever hire a Sherpa who's never been to the top? Probably not, right? You wouldn't hire one that's read about it in a book. You wouldn't hire one that's read a documentary. You wouldn't hire one that knows someone who's been to the top. You'd probably hire one that's been to the top, right? And that would be a selling feature. When it comes to our health, you know, this is an ongoing journey, right? There really is no top to this mountain. So I want you to know that, you know, you don't have to have perfect health to be able to offer that to other people, but you have to be at least a couple of steps ahead and stay, you know, true to, you know, what you offer other individuals. So when you um, <clears throat> are presenting yourself or you're presenting your services, you are in a state of coherence, right? You are in a state of high vibration. So this morning, you know, for, for me, for example, I've done my gratitude. I've done some prayer. I've done some breath work. I've taken a cold shower. I've done some grounding in the morning, spent some time with my family. I made my magic mushroom elixir. So I wouldn't be able to talk about any of these things had I not done them myself first, right? My aura ring score was a 91. So I'm showing up prepared so that I can show up, you know, for each and every one of you. Now, if I was tired and hung over, right, and just crawled out of bed to, to give this presentation, I'm going to show up differently. And my confidence level is going to be different, right? How I exude confidence is going to come across very differently. And you're probably not going to pay attention to what I have to say. And I'm not going to feel in alignment either. So we have to be a product of our product. And again, it's not about being perfect, but it's about showing up the best way that you possibly can for yourself, but you know, most importantly for yourself and your family, but then those around you, because people want what you have to offer, but you have to have it first, right? You have to have it yourself first. We can't pour from an empty cup. Number two, and really there's no specific order here, but you have to surround yourself with the right people. So, you, you know, being here today when you could be anywhere else, I think is a smart decision for you because it's surrounding yourself with other people who are on a similar journey right? Like this topic, uh, even if you think about the title of this topic, right? We talk about seven energy centers. That's going to attract a certain type of person. 
right? Whereas if I said how to make a million dollars in the next 12 months, that's going to attract a different type of person, right? Who's seeking something slightly different. So the fact that you're here surrounding yourself, and that's why I want, you know, you to really participate and be on camera and engage in the conversation, because these are people who are attracted specifically to that title. Okay. And, you know, in, in typical fashion, there's people that sign up and don't show up. So you are the cream of the crop for actually showing up today, right? These are people that sign up and actually commit to things. So the fact that you're here, I want to acknowledge you and, you know, acknowledge, acknowledge your peers for being committed. So these are people who are committed to growing their practices, growing themselves and growing their communities. Okay. Do the work. It's not, a, it's not about uh, perfection. It's about progress. Right. And even with our clients, right. It's, it's about, are we moving and trending in the right direction? There's going to be some bumps in the road. There's going to be some days that, you know, you don't take that cold shower or you don't get that grounding in, or you don't get that morning sunlight in, or maybe you go to bed late, or maybe you don't have the perfect meal, but it's about progress over perfection. Okay. So we don't want you to, I don't want you to feel like an imposter just because you're not perfect. It's not about that. And we don't expect that of other people. We expect them to make progress and become a better version of themselves in, in small ways each and every single day. Okay. Um, ask for help. This should say help. Let me correct that. You can certainly ask for help if you want, but, um, ask for help. So vulnerability is actually a superpower. This is something that many of us may not be doing enough of, and partly because we think that we should know everything. We think that we should have all the answers. I remember when I was growing up and still, it still happens to this day. Uh, for whatever reason, my mom thought I should know all the answers to all the problems that come up in life. Okay. So <laughs> she thought that I should know how to do my taxes. So when I was a teenager, I actually took the H and R block tax training. I was the youngest kid in the class and it was like, so annoying. I, I, I hated every minute of it, to be totally honest. And I think it, it's why I don't like number crunching anymore. But she thought I should know how to do taxes. She thought I know I should know how to fix cars, right? Without any training, without any formal education, like it's just assumed that you should know how to do everything. She thought that I should know how to do home renovations and do tiling and all these things, right? And and so um, I didn't know how to do any of the. I mean, I learned some, some of these skills over time. And part of that was because she believed that I knew how to do these things. So I believed in myself, but asking for help is a very important um, skill for us as entrepreneurs. When we ask for help, you'll be shocked at how many people show up you'll, to help you, to support you, who have tools in their tool belt that can, that can be of, of great use to you. Let's say you're climbing this mountain and you forget something. Well, you want to be surrounded by the right people who have that tool, who are willing to share it with you, but they don't know you need that tool unless you ask for help right? There's lots going on inside of us. And many of us put on a brave face each and every single day. And people don't know that there's something going on inside of us, right? If you're cold, is there any way for me to know you're cold? If you're hot, is there any way for me to know you're hot? If you're uh, emotionally struggling, is there any way for me to know? Probably not because most of us keep it, you know, pretty buttoned up. And so if you're struggling in your business, if you're struggling with something personal, then again, it's important to surround yourself with the right people who can empathize with you, right? Who are climbing that same mountain, who are on a similar journey, who may have encountered that same challenge or similar challenge and solve that similar challenge. And they're always willing to help and support. Type in me if you'd be willing to help somebody solve a problem that you've already solved. I know I would, right? I see all of you would. And one of the things that I've learned over the years is the more we help other people solve their challenges as our challenges, uh, you know, new challenges develop over time, there's magically other people show up to help us, right? So there's this kind of fractal effect of helping one another that takes place because then other people show up willing to pour into us and willing to help us. So what is something, you know, this is a good time to be vulnerable. What is something that you're struggling with right now? 
All right, we talked about focus uh, for some of you or time management with some of you, but what is it? Maybe it's a lack of support from your spouse. Maybe it's a lack of belief in yourself. Maybe it's a skill that you need to develop in your business that you haven't developed yet. Maybe it's financial, right? Let's go a little bit deeper here and see if we can ask one another for some support or help. And sometimes even just expressing what your needs are uh, opens up this treasure chest that the universe has to offer us. And, the, and maybe even, even if it isn't somebody from this group right now that can help you, just asking for help, we start searching for it. We start looking for it and we start realizing, wow, there's the help has always been there. I just never asked for it. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm not going to force you to, but I think that if you can be vulnerable for even just a minute, that's going to be helpful for you because you might be able to find somebody here that can support you or help you. Okay. All right. So focus is a challenge for sure. Uh, okay. So I think that, you know, there's one of the things that happens this day and age is something called FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. And uh, focus is a muscle that we need to develop. And my one of my clients, uh, Benedict, she came up with this, uh, this new phrase instead of FOMO, it's called JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. Okay. So when we say no to something, we should take joy in that and acknowledge that, right? That, hey, I said no to this thing so that I could do this thing instead, so that I could focus and double down on the things that I already have. So where can we take joy in missing out? Okay. Lisa is saying, I struggle with belief. Can I start with my own practice and make this work? I think all of us at some point struggled with that belief, right? It, I think it's a, it's a common place for us to be. And one of the things that you'll discover as you start building that process out for yourself is how many people actually value what you have to offer. So it really starts by us putting it out there and getting that, you know, that feedback loop from others who are truly valuing what we have to share. Okay. Um, VU says that, uh, how to reach out to, uh, how to reach out to many people about my work. Okay. Awesome. We'll talk a little bit about that today. All right. So vulnerability is a superpower, right? Many of us, you know, wake up and we might feel like an imposter. Some mornings I wake up and I feel, oh my God, like, what am I doing? Am I, am I going to be able to make an impact on people's lives? And that's being totally transparent and totally honest because the vision that I have, and I know many of you have is to help thousands of people or to help millions of people, right? And sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, why are people lined up outside of the coach purse store? Right. And there's like this velvet rope, then there's all these people lined up to pay for, you know, overpriced purses or overpriced, you know, things, and they're not willing to pay for their health, right? Like what is wrong with our society, right? We, we ask ourselves that and, and when will people value the thing that is most valuable, which is their health? I think things have changed over the last little bit and, uh, you know, people are looking for solutions and we have them. Okay. All right. The next thing about you, and one of the things about you, and there's so many things about you that we could talk about is to develop a multiplier mindset. Okay. So a multiplier mindset is different than a extractor mindset. A multiplier mindset, I'll explain this really quick, is think of, think of an orange. If I gave all of you an orange, some of you are going to juice that orange. You're going to juice it, juice it again to get the most juice out of the pulp. And a percentage of you, maybe all of you, are going to take that orange and juice the orange, but you're also going to pull out the seeds and you're going to plant the seeds. And when you plant the seeds, now you're allowing for that orange, started off as one orange and maybe a glass of juice or half a glass of juice. Now you have the opportunity, if you nurture that seed, to grow an orange tree. Right, That seed is the tree, minus time and minus nurturing. So what are some of the seeds in your mindset 
in your life that you need to nurture, provide the right soil for, and enough time for. Okay, so a multiplier mindset is somebody who consistently nurtures their assets, who consistently nurtures and develops their skills. All right. Number two, and like I said, we could spend an hour on each of these things, but first and foremost, the first energy center is you. The next energy center is relationship capital. Okay. So relationship capital is very critical in building our business because these are people that know, like, and trust us. So we think about relationship capital. Let's think about some of the things that we can start doing. And you might want to pull out a piece of paper so you can write down some of the things that we're going to talk about here. So first and foremost, friends, family, and colleagues, right? These are people that know, like, and trust you. So the question for, for you that I have is, do your friends and family, at least, know what you do? Could the people closest to you explain what you do and how you help people? Because if they can't, then they can't be ambassadors who are out there promoting your services. They can't be listening for opportunities when to say, hey, you know what? Janet can help you. This is exactly what she does. Or I know the perfect person that can help you. So do your friends and family, the ones that are closest to you, know what you do? Because they can be out there promoting you. How about your colleagues? Do your colleagues know what you do? Do they know who your ideal customer avatar is? Do they know how you help people, how you support them? And if the answer is no, then these are important relationships that we want to start developing. Now, you don't have to have hundreds of friends, family, and colleagues. You know, having 10 people out there who know what you do could be a great starting point. Okay, and if they don't know what you do, maybe it's a good time to catch up with them. Okay. You can also join a local networking group. So there's groups like BNI. I actually um, joined BNI when I first started my business in Cincinnati. And I used to actually host the meetings in my office. So it would force me to be there every, every single Thursday. Okay. And so we hosted the meetings for many years. I eventually became the vice president of our chapter and I got to meet some amazing people within my community. And every week I would have to stand up, all of us would in the group, and we'd have 60 seconds to tell people what a good referral is for us. And then depending on the size of your chapter, you'd have 30, 40, 50 people out there promoting what you do or being able to say, Hey, I know someone who needs this. YPO is another organization that some of you might consider joining. Toastmasters is another organization. So get yourself out there. Even if you have a, you know, online practice, what are you doing to get yourself out there in the community? Another place that you could build relationships is perhaps your temple or your church, right? Where people get together consistently who, who trust you, right? Who have similar beliefs as you, you could be the health counselor for your local community, build relationships that way. Okay. And if nothing else, these opportunities are for you to develop the skill of communication. All right, another one, I like this one, which is to patron complementary businesses. So what are some businesses in your community? And it, it's so much easier when you just think about what are some businesses that you go to? So maybe you go to a yoga class, right? And, and if you don't, maybe that's a good place for you to start. Now, you don't become, you don't go into the yoga studio and say, hey, I'd love to meet with the owner. You actually go there first and you become a paying client. Okay. Who else has a lot of clients that um, you might want to work with? How about a personal trainer? Right. These are people who have disposable income who are wanting to get healthy. 
And a personal trainer likely isn't offering the services that you're offering. So hire a trainer for yourself, even if it's just once a week. Refer people to this trainer. And guess what? It's going to cause a reciprocal effect for you. How about health food stores, right? Most of you probably shop or go to a health food store locally. Maybe there's products there that uh, you don't carry in your practice that they do. So it's a great place for you to refer local clients to. And it's a great place for you to shop as well, right? You don't have to go there and, and spend millions of dollars because you probably get you know, some of these products at a discount, but maybe there's some unique products that they sell that you don't, that you don't have wholesale accounts with. So develop a relationship there. How about a gluten-free bakery? There's an idea, right? So if you recommend your clients eat gluten-free, maybe there's a local bakery that you go to. Get to know the owner, right? Try their foods. So think of places that you shop and become their best customer. Now, a best customer isn't somebody who spends the most money because you can only spend so much, right? Best customer is one that refers the most. Isn't that true? Don't we want, who wants more clients that refer others? Type in yes, if that's what you want. Okay. And type in nothing if you don't want more referrals. This is a chance for you to say yes and to command the universe and let the universe know I want more people like this. How many want more reviews and, and uh, you know, social proof that what you do works, right? It's the same people. Yes, you can type in yes. Well, it starts by you doing that. So here's what we're gonna, what we're gonna do. We're gonna spend literally two minutes you're going to Google a local business that you go to and it could be any business. Okay. It could be one of these businesses we talk about. It could be your favorite car wash that you go to. It could be um, a practitioner that you see. I want you to go ahead, go open up your Google search and type in the name of one of your favorite businesses could be the grocery store you shop at. It could be anything. And I want you to write a five-star review. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'll give you a few minutes, play some music as well. And here's what we're doing when we do this. We're, we're setting a ripple, right? We're sending a ripple out when we're doing this. And when you're done, you can just go ahead and type in done.
Okay, awesome. So one of the things I've realized over the years is if you want something, go do it for somebody else. It makes it so much easier for you to even receive it because you've done it for somebody else. So when we do things, we create this, we create this void and the universe doesn't like voids. It has a way of filling it. So I'm going to invite you all to go through an exercise where just make a list of all the companies that you use, or maybe the ones you use most frequently on a weekly or a monthly basis and go write them reviews. If you want more of that, then become more of that. It's harmless, it's painless. They may not even know, but it'll be something that uh, you will benefit from as well because it feels good to acknowledge others. And of course, if you don't have anything good to say, then you shouldn't be using those businesses on a regular basis, okay? And here's the thing, like one thing that's great when you write a review is that the business owner usually gets notified. So if it's a small business, especially, they're going to see that review from you. So get in the habit, and maybe this is something that's instead of sitting down today and doing it, just get in the habit of when you get in your car, if you had a great experience, write the organization or business a review. Okay, so it sets the stage for people to do that for you. All right, let's keep moving. I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit. And Beverly says it felt good doing that. All right, awesome. So energy center number three in our business is marketing and messaging. Marketing and messaging. So there's lots to unpack here. And what we're going to focus on right now is a, a few key things. So marketing is storytelling and sales is persuasion. So people say that I don't like selling. Well, become better at storytelling. One thing I learned from my uh, speaker coach, Majid, is this framework, the for who, right? So who so this is your title. So mine would be, I am the functional medicine success coach for functional medicine practitioners and holistic health coaches who are starting their practices and want to build them based on the five freedoms. All right. And I could fill in and I'm just ad-libbing there, but who are you, right? I am the for who. So we have to claim that. You also want to get really good at storytelling. The way the brain communicates and remembers things is based on stories, not facts. So the example I'll give you is my son. So he always tells me at night when I put him to bed, he's like, dad, can you tell me a story? He never says, dad, can you tell me a whole bunch of facts? Now I can incorporate facts into that story, but we want to follow the framework of a story and a good framework to follow is the hero's journey framework. Okay. All stories follow this. Next is lead and nurture your audiences. So nurturing is important, right? They want, they need, they need to hear from you frequently and often, and feel nurtured by your message. You want to become a concise and precise communicator. So this is something that we develop over time. But remember that people's attention spans are shorter than ever before. In fact, shorter than goldfish. We've, uh, uh, we've reached the heights of, uh, you know, human undevelopment. Our attention spans are becoming shorter and shorter and shorter. And so there's a lot of content that's now being created in short video form, right? And it's being prioritized. So TikTok, I think, has overtaken Google, or, or I'm sorry, YouTube officially. So, you know, it's pretty remarkable to think that, that uh, we could take that giant down um, with uh, TikTok. The other thing that's happening is if you'll notice, if you log into Facebook, that at the very top, they're showing you shorts and reels. Okay, again, short form content is very powerful. And in fact, I just did an interview with uh, Dr. David Bennett from our mentorship, and he's got 
Um, in less than nine months, he's got over almost uh, four and a half million views to his videos. So it's amazing what can happen. And, you know, just sharing simple sound bites that we're all capable of creating. So become concise and precise. This is what people are looking for and craving. And this is what is getting people's attention these days. Uh, case studies are also an excellent way to showcase your skills. So if you don't like to brag about yourself, which nobody does, nobody likes somebody who, you know, is constantly showing off and bragging about themselves, share case studies. Even when you share a testimonial, right? Add some color, add some context. Okay, what, was this, what was the story here? And we want to make that story compelling to somebody who's reading it. We want to make that story um, so that we, we want to share that story in such a way that the person reading it, if they're your ideal customer avatar, they see themselves in that story. They see their struggles in that story. They see the wins that have taken place as something that they desire. Okay, if I say, you know, meet Susan, she's a 43 year old woman. She lost 15 pounds on my program. Okay, great, but there's no story there. Right? Meet Susan. She's a 43 year old mom with a budding and busy career. She was struggling to find balance with her health and it was causing her to feel XYZ. She had been to several other practitioners, had lab tests done, was told everything was normal. She went to see another healthcare practitioner, a natural holistic practitioner who put her on a bunch of supplements. And those left her bloated and feeling miserable. And she had a $500 supplement bill every month and she wasn't getting the results that she was looking for. Then she came to see us and we uncovered that she was not following even the most basic lifestyle principles. And we started doing X, Y, Z with her. Here's what we discovered. Here's what we found. Here's a transformation that took place. And here is a final result, All right? So there's a story now there that makes it more relatable for a mom who's, who's tuned in somebody who's been to the doctor that's been told everything that's normal, someone who's perhaps tried taking a bunch of different supplements, maybe on their own or through the guidance of another healthcare practitioner. So that allows us to see ourselves in that story. Okay. Why did they come to you? How did they come to you? Were they referred to you? Add that into the story. She was referred to me by one of my clients or she tuned into a webinar. Okay, so the story is going to add some color. And these are excellent ways to showcase your results. So don't just throw up a before and after and show a couple and have just a couple of sentences. Walk us through the story so that we can relate to it. All right, energy center number four is sales. So this is like the S word, right, in our business. And of course, super important because without sales, nothing happens, right? If you could have all the other energy centers, but if nobody's buying your stuff, then who really cares, right? This is not a, uh, we're not a nonprofit, right? Some of you might have nonprofit aspects that you like to support, but your business is not a nonprofit. So we have to make sales and there's certain skills that we have to develop in order for that to happen. So let's redefine sales so we can feel good about it, okay? So sales is helping someone make a fully informed decision that benefits them, your practice, and your community. So it's gotta be a win-win-win. Okay, so it benefits them because they're gonna get results that they haven't re received or achieved by doing anything else that they've tried. It's gonna benefit your practice, right? We don't wanna make a sale and then service a client and lose money right? It's got to benefit our practice because we're bringing in the right people with the right attitude who are going to take action, who are fully aligned with our value system and are going to get great results and promote our practice as ambassadors. And it benefits your community because now there is somebody who's healthier, happier, more whole as a result of working with you. And they're out there in the world doing good. Okay. So I don't want to work with couch potatoes. Right. If I change your health, I don't want you to sit in front of the TV and watch Netflix all day. I want to know you're going to be playing with your kids. I want to know you're going to be volunteering. I want to know that you're going to be building your business and 
making your community and your clients healthier and happier, or at least happier from your services, depending on what business you're in. Without marketing, sales becomes persuasion. So if we're not telling stories, we're not sharing case studies, we're not you know, nurturing people, it's persuasion. And we're having to twist their arm into doing something that they may or may not fully understand. So we have to educate people before we ever make them an offer. Now, when it comes to sales, you want to emphasize what matters. So all of us have a phone, right? And the way we chose that phone is based on what is emphasized to us. So, you know, when, when they launched the iPhone, if you go back and watch the video, it was an internet communication device, a music player, and a phone. It was all three of those things packaged into one, and now it's so much more, right? It's a, it's a camera, right? So if you love taking pictures of your kids or your grandkids or your pets or whatever the case may be, then maybe you're going to emphasize the quality of the camera. If you love listening, if you love FaceTime videos, right, or video calls, you're probably going to emphasize that feature. Okay, so what is it that you need to emphasize to the client that you're speaking to? Because they're not going to be interested in all the bells and whistles that you have to offer. They're going to be interested in what they're interested in. And sometimes asking that is important, right? So a simple question could be, what inspired you to set up this call together? What spoke to you about our services that made you want to speak with me today, right? Just ask that question and then double down on emphasizing that, right? Because what you offer people, it could be very broad, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that this phone does. Some features I may not even use. So if I go to the sale, if I go to the sales rep and they start talking about all the things that this phone does, but I only care about the camera, then they're wasting my time. Okay. So we have to make sure that we understand why, why the client is excited and interested to work with us and emphasize that and double down on that when they speak with us. So when a lot of people get on calls and they get into the opportunity audit with our sales team, it's really a, a practice advisory team. That's one of the first things we want to know is what inspired you to get on this call, All right? Because there's so many things that we offer, right? Is it the clinical coaching? Is it the done for you assets? Is it the community? Is it uh, the technical support that you get? Okay. Is it the leadership? Is it the one-on-one -on -one coaching? Is it the group coaching? Right? There's so many elements and aspects of our program that we can emphasize, but we have to know what they're excited about and emphasize that. Right? Maybe when somebody comes to you, they're excited about uh, getting to the root cause. Maybe they're excited about functional lab testing because nobody's done that for them before. Maybe they're excited about the coaching that you offer them. Maybe they're excited that you're going to help them develop a meal plan. Maybe they're excited because they can email you whenever they need a question answered. So you have to really focus on that. Okay. Emphasize what matters. And then we will always want to use a prescriptive selling formula. So as healthcare practitioners, uh, I won't get into this, but you can research that a little bit more. We have a whole training on it in our mentorship group uh, that we offer. But uh, a prescriptive selling formula is, is a way of listening, right? So when you go to the doctor, they don't just, you don't just walk in and they write the prescription, even though it might feel like that sometimes. They listen to you, right? They listen to your needs. They do, they, you know, kind of address what symptoms, they listen to the symptoms that you're having. They have a differential diagnosis, and then they provide a solution for you. They could choose from a million different medications, or you could choose from a million different supplements, but it's the listening part that's important. So we want to listen 80% of the time and only talk 20. This is called the Pareto principle. Okay. So 80% of the time we're listening, 20% of the time we're talking. Most people want to feel heard and they want to feel understood. Okay. 
Um, you can create an opportunity audit. Some of you will have a chance to go through that. And I would invite all of you uh, to go through that uh, with one of our uh, team members, because then you get to see what that's like and be on the receiving end of it. And you always want to put education before an offer. Always put education before an offer. I don't want to get on a call to educate somebody. That's what my marketing should be doing. That's what my messaging should be doing. I want to get on a call to make sure that they're the right fit. Okay. So, um, Aaron, I'd, I'd love to have you unmute and maybe you can talk about what is it like to deliver an opportunity audit and being on the receiving end, what can somebody expect? Right. So the opportunity audit, it's, it's like our, the way I think about it. So as a naturopathic doctor, I'm maybe this mindset was trained into me, how, how to listen, how to observe, how to see opportunities for someone to improve their health. So with the opportunity audit, what we've decided to do is create that same experience where we understand what a lot of the needs are. Uh, some of you have spoken to me and have joined us in the mentorship, maybe you spoke to our team, but we're looking for opportunities where we know that you will have the highest leverage if you focus there. We wanna give you the gift of focus and clarity. So while there's so many, we hear this a lot, there's so many different things I could do to grow my practice. I could be on TikTok and YouTube and networking and doing webinars and going to five different trainings. And what we realize the value is helping you zone in on one or two of the most important things for you. And uh, we, we don't assume to know that for you. Someone might say, we want a turnkey program. Someone might say, I need help scaling my practice. I'm so busy right now. How do I grow my team? So the opportunity audit is to help it help us create an efficient way to find out what's most important for you and if we can actually help you. Awesome. And it's a great exercise. Like one of the things that I love um, is going through somebody's process so that I could learn from that process. So Aaron, if you want to share the link, if somebody's interested in, in setting that up with you or somebody from the team, you can drop that link in the chat and you can get to experience what that is, right? And here's how we approach, you know, this process with our clients is, can I help you? Can I help my practice so that I can stay in business and continue to, you know, put this message out there and will the community become better because you are uh, engaged in this process, right? Where can we help you transform? That's always our goal and our objective. And then it always helps when you go through a process on the receiving end so that you know also how to deliver it. Okay. We never do, um, we don't do any hard selling. That's one of our philosophies because we're going to go through this process with you to understand, is this the right fit for you and help you understand and help you make a fully informed decision so that when you say yes, or when you say not now, you are fully informed in that decision, right? Like Lisa, um, she's decided yes, but she's going to wait until the summer, right? So now she knows what she can start doing and working towards in the meantime, right? And of course, we're going to continue nurturing her. We're going to continue, um, you know, seeing her in trainings like this so that she can be fully prepared when she's ready to engage. Okay. All right. Moving on, number five is program delivery. This is uh, this is an important one, of course. You know, once somebody says yes, then we have to have something that they're saying yes to. And what exactly uh, is that? So program delivery is a few things. One is we wanna create a program that is transformational for your clients, not transactional. Okay, transformation, not transaction. Now, I know at some point in your business, you're gonna need the money. Right. I know at some point in my business, um, you know, I needed to make sure I could put food on my table and keep the lights on. And I'll admit that sometimes it did feel transactional because it was about me. But when we make it transformational, then it's about the client. Okay. So transformation changes who they are. Transaction doesn't change who they are. It just means that the money has changed accounts. It doesn't mean that anything else has really happened. So how can you create a program 
that is transformational? And how can you even let people know from the very beginning that, hey, our goal is to transform either your practice in this case, or our goal is to transform your health, to transform you know, your family's health for generations to come. And you want to emphasize that. Okay. You want always want to start with a minimum viable product and then build up your program from there. So this is a mistake that a lot of people make. Uh, this comes up often in conversations, no matter how many times I tell people not to do this, they, they feel like they need to do this. We never want to build out a program and then sell it. We want to sell it first and then build it. Now, here's the thing. You just have to be one step ahead. Now, you have to have a list, of course, of what you're going to be offering so people know what they're buying. But do you have to have week 12 of your program built out if you haven't even had a single sales call? We call them discovery calls. If you haven't had a single discovery call, type in yes or no. What do you think? Go ahead and type in the chat. Do you think you need week 12? These are rhetorical questions, of course. Do you think you need week 12 of your program fully baked and built out before you have a single client? Probably not, right? Because you might even change your mind as far as what that person needs at week 12. Like You can have an outline of, hey, here's the things we're going to cover. Here's the services we're going to offer. So we don't need that. We just have to stay one step ahead. Write that down. One step ahead. And always remember when you're delivering your program that you are the guide, not the hero. You are the guide, not the hero. The client is the hero, right? So think about this. If you're leading somebody up Mount Everest, whose picture gets taken first, yours or theirs? You're going to be the one taking their picture, right? With them planting the flag at the top. And then they'll pull you in because they're going to obviously acknowledge that they couldn't have, do, they couldn't have done this without you. And then you're going to take a picture together. Right? So you're the guide, not the hero. And you want to position yourself that way. Right? Even when you're offering your program to them, they want to feel like the hero. They don't want to feel like a victim who's being rescued. They want to be a health hero. We're going to show you how to save yourself. I'm going to be there every step of the way, holding your hand through the process, answering any questions that you have cheering for you, rooting you on, supporting you, guiding you, finding your blind spots, filling in any gaps, but this is your journey. And that takes a lot of pressure off of us, doesn't it? All right. Now, ideally, when you're delivering a program, over time, you want to deliver a program that offers uh, a few different opportunities. One is one-to-one. -one. No matter what program you offer, there needs to be at least some personalization and one-to-one -one component to it. So in our program, we offer a, um, uh, a few different uh, levels of service, but all of our programs include at least one, sometimes even up to five, one-on-one -on -one conversations. They also include one-to-community, right? Or one-to-many, which is where a group of people get together and we're teaching them individually. And of course, there's self-study, right? So over time, you will develop a program that incorporates all of these things. So if I think of my mentorship as an example, there is one-to-one -one services that people get. They get one-on-one -on -one coaching with a mentorship advisor. They also get uh, one-to-community where they get together throughout the week with community members who are on a similar journey as they are. And there's also self-study, right? We have a portal that you can log in and view past trainings that are relevant to you right now. Or we can point you in that direction. 
So create over time, you want to create a program that offers all of these opportunities. Now, here's the thing, your one-on-one -on -one content later becomes your community content, right? Like this conversation I'm having with you right now, I could be having this conversation one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And I have, I've had these conversations. Hey, these are the energy centers you need to build out. Then I can offer it in a community setting like I am right now. And then the recording turns into a self-study. It gets uploaded into a portal, gets uploaded to YouTube, gets uploaded to um, you know, our hub, our education hub, and people can watch it on their own time. Okay, so we want to think about our content in this context. So we don't start with building out a course. We don't start with, uh, we start with one-on-one, -on -one, which then later turns into one-to-many, which then can later turn into self-study. Okay. So just uh, use that context uh, where it's relevant to you. All right. Energy center number six is program over delivery. Now, this is important because when people sign up, remember, we're creating a minimum viable product. So we're just getting them, we're creating a program that gets them to say yes, but it's the bare bones, it's the bare minimum. Now, that's all they're expecting, right? That you're going to get these particular things. So if we're trying to over deliver, what are some things that we can do to over deliver? So uh, one thing I learned over the years is the extra mile is only an inch. The extra mile is only an inch, which means that, you know, it's the small things that people really appreciate. You know, our healthcare industry is not very service oriented, right? It's procedure oriented. It's not service oriented. So it's not hard to differentiate yourself as a great service provider and go that extra mile slash inch. And there's simple ways that you could do that. Okay. So an example could be a welcome package. You can offer your clients a welcome package and it doesn't have to be anything super fancy to begin with. It could be something like a gratitude journal, All right? Hey, I'm grateful for you. I want to express my gratitude towards you for taking, um, you know, some action geared towards your health and your happiness. One of the most powerful tools that I've found for my health and happiness is having a gratitude journal. So I wanted to gift this to you. Okay. Um, in our practice, uh, when we give a gratitude journal, um, there's a, a, actually a special uh, bonus that they get is that when they fill this out and they bring it back completed, they don't have to give it to us, but they can show us that it's completed. We will replace it for them for life. Okay. Cause I know every time they open up that journal, their subconscious mind is thinking of me, right? Because they received it from our practice. So a small little gesture like that goes a long way. And they're like, you know, a five minute gratitude journal is like 20 bucks. So it's not cost prohibitive for you to do that. Not everyone's going to bring it back filled out, but that gesture goes a long way. Okay. So where can you go the extra mile slash inch? Another thing that you could do to over deliver is gamify your journey. So when a client loses a certain amount of weight or when their lab work comes back and it's much better than before, uh, how do we celebrate that? Right. Our brain craves dopamine, right? This is why, you know, think about things that are addictive. They all raise our dopamine levels. So winning and gamification also raises our dopamine level. So where can you incorporate that into your business? Now, again, each of these topics could be an hour long, but I just want to plant some seeds with you so you can start thinking about that. Sprinkle in celebration and acknowledgement. So one thing that we do in our mentorship this is something new that we're doing now is we actually have a award that each client gets when they hit a certain milestone. So when you make your first $10,000, there's an award that you receive when you make your first 25, when you make your first 50, when you make your first hundred, you're actually getting awarded and acknowledged for these uh, accomplishments. Okay. So where can you celebrate your client's journeys or what are some key things that you can celebrate? You want to bake small gifts into your program, right? So when you're trying to figure out the pricing of your program, you want to factor in this over delivery. So it's not coming out of your profit. Your clients have paid for it and it doesn't have to be expensive. So don't, you know, don't feel like, oh my God, I've got to give them a, you know, a very, really, really, really expensive gift. It's got to be thoughtful. 
thoughtful is more valuable than price. Birthday cards go a long way, believe it or not. Uh, we get this all the time that most people don't get, you know, a lot of people get like text messages on their birthday, or they might get people typing in Facebook, happy birthdays to them, or, um, you know, emails, things like that. But very few people actually get a card in the mail. We still, to this day, send our clients a birthday card, assuming we have it on file. Flowers, right? If somebody, um, you know, you see on Facebook, one of your clients, or they tell you, hey, you know, we just had a recent death in the family or a grandchild was born or something they're celebrating, right? Flowers go a long way as well. Remember, we're investing in a relationship, okay? And then heartfelt gestures. What are some things that you can do that go a long way? All right, last one. Raving fans and ambassadors. So this is a big energy center in your practice. Now, if you're just starting out, like some of you are, then you may not have reached this point just yet. And one of the things that uh, you can do is you can read a book by Joey Clark. It's called How to Never Lose a Customer Again. I actually did a whole training on it, uh, specifically for functional medicine practices. And when I read the book, I didn't even realize that we were already doing these things in our practice. And once I read the book, I'm like, oh my God, like we're doing all of these things. But what we did was we doubled down on those things because we want to have customers and clients that uh, work with us for a lifetime because we're providing value to them, right? Not just so I can say that, hey, we want you here forever, but we want to continue to provide value to these people. Um, and there are some TED Talks or not TED Talks, but some YouTube uh, talks that you can watch if you don't want to read the book. And uh, there's a PDF that I can also share uh, as well. How many of you would like that PDF? Would it be helpful if you could see those energy centers? Okay. Uh, and there's strategic steps at strategic times that you would take in order for you to, you know, turn that, you know, customer into a raving fan or an ambassador. So there's a psychology to that as well. And you want to make sure that you're following uh, that formula. So I'll, uh, I'll dig that up and I guess I'm trying to figure out what the best way to share that might be. Let me see if I have it right now. I could drop the PDF. Give me one moment. Okay, so give it a second and you should see it in the, in the chat so you're able to download it. But this will give you a formula um, that allows you to, and you, you could do kind of a self audit on whether you think you need to improve any of these areas or not. Something even as simple as a handwritten welcome card goes a long way. It could even be when you welcome a new patient that you do a welcome video. It could be a Loom video. It could be a dub video. And literally, it takes just a few minutes to do that. Okay. So that personal touch goes a very, very long way. So let's talk about raving fans. Uh, we want to create lasting relationships. And we want to kind of anchor that in from the moment the person joins your program. My goal, Brett, working with you is to make sure that I provide the absolute best service that my, me and my team are here to answer any questions that you have, that we're here to support you in any way that we can. We're here to listen if you have any challenges and make sure that we can course correct if we need to. I want you to be a, a raving fan of our process. I want you to tell everyone that you know about what we do. That's my commitment. And look at how excited he is. He's got a big smile on his face, right? So, uh, you know, you want to lay that out from the very beginning, that this is my commitment to you. And if at any point you feel like I'm not doing that, you let me know and we'll make it right. Okay. So you always want to leave people better than you found them. Anywhere, everywhere you go. And you want to become the go-to person with all things health. How many of you get questions that are totally unrelated to what you specialize in? Type in me if that's the case, right? I'll get people messaging me about like the weirdest, most obscure diseases and conditions. And that's because they trust me. I'm the go-to person for them when it comes to health. So they just assume like my mom did that I could fix everything. Okay. Now it's okay if you can't. 
right? And sometimes we we get that text and they say, can you help with this? And we it deflates us. However, it's our perspective. It should inflate us, right? Not our egos, but it should at least inflate our perspective of trust. That, wow, this person trusts me, even though this is like something I can't help them with, they came to me first out of all the people they could have reached out to. And then, of course, if you can help them, you do. But if you can't, then you point them in the right direction. And then, of course, we want to capture written testimonials, video interviews, and online reviews, right? So we want uh, people to be able to share how they're benefiting and enjoying uh, our services. So written testimonials are great. You can point them towards your Google page to write a review. You can uh, capture written testimonials through uh, other services that are out there, even an email, right? There's a simple formula framework that we share on how to capture testimonials. Uh, it's really easy. It's a two-step process. So basically message somebody either through email or text message. Text message works great. And you let them know, hey, I'm working on, um, you know, I, I, so if it's already a client, then basically you tell them, hey, I'd love to know what you've enjoyed most about working together. All right, really simple. What have you enjoyed most about working together? And well, it starts like this. Let me reframe, sorry. So the first question you ask is, hey, um, I had a few questions for you. Uh, is it okay if I ask you? I had a few questions. I'm, I'm working on improving and optimizing my business and services. Is it okay if I, have a, if I ask you a few questions? Most people are going to say yes. And then the next one, the next question, so the first question you're going to ask them then is, what have you enjoyed most about working together? Right? They're going to respond, there's your testimonial. Question number two is, what can I do to improve my services so that you become a raving fan and tell everyone you know about what I do? See how harmless and simple that is? Okay, so really simple framework that you can use. Video interviews are also great. There's actually a third-party service that you can use. I know some of you on this call have used this service through us where you can actually get somebody to interview your clients for you. Okay, so if you don't like doing it or you feel uncomfortable, there's a service that can do that for you. And then, of course, online reviews, right? Pointing people in the direction. You want to make it easy for people to be able to get an online review from you. One of my business coaches, after every single call, he asks me, how'd we do today? How would you rate this call on a scale of one to 10? Okay, so if you're an A player, A players love feedback. B players don't like feedback. So become an A player, right? And simply ask people, how did you enjoy our call today? How did you enjoy our time today? Did you get value today? And if they say yes, which they should, then that opens up the door. Would you be open to sharing your experience and writing a review, a short review? Okay. And now we're starting to develop that raving fan ambassador attitude. So we have to groom people to become raving fans and ambassadors, right? It doesn't just happen automatically. If you might be wondering, man, I've changed this person's life. Why aren't they referring all their friends and family to me? Well, there's a formula for that, which I shared with you. So you'll be able to download that guide, be able to look up Joey Clark's work. Actually, it might be Joey Coleman. I think it's Joey Coleman. So you'll be able to look up Joey Coleman's work and uh, learn from that framework and start incorporating what we talked about today. So can you see after what we learned today, how if you took your clients through this, these, if you built up these seven energy centers, can you see how you can have a thriving business? Type in yes, if you can now see maybe um, ways to improve and optimize Maybe you're seeing some gaps that you didn't consider. And nothing that I talked about today requires you spending any money. Maybe the small gifts, small gestures that you're going to do, that's after people are going to pay you, right? It's developing the right framework and the right mindset and then taking action.
All right, awesome. So did you get value today? All right, so go ahead and type in what you enjoyed most about today's presentation. What was your biggest aha moment? What did you enjoy the most from our seven energy centers? Let me review them with you really quick. I know some of you tuned in a few minutes behind. So the first energy center is you. Second energy center is relationship capital. Third energy center is marketing and messaging. Fourth energy center is sales. Fifth energy center is program delivery. Sixth energy center is program over delivery, going that extra inch, and then raving fans and ambassadors. Okay. So go ahead and type in what you enjoyed the most about today, what your biggest aha moment was, and perhaps where there might be a gap that you need to fill. Okay, awesome. Over delivery, more reviews, says Heather. All right, putting energy into other people's businesses. Yeah, show people you appreciate them. Reviews, messaging, awesome. So one of the things that I learned over the years is, and I can't remember who taught me this. I know I've learned this from several people, is that, you know, become... If you want to have awesome customers, become an awesome customer first, All right? So it's, you know, life is an opportunity. It's a playground for us to, to show up a certain way. And so if you want, you know, if you want more reviews, write more reviews. If you want more referrals, give more referrals. If you want more help, help more people. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to ask some of you to, to share, um, if you would, and we'll wrap things up in just a moment here. Uh, I know Aaron was gracious enough to tell us about the opportunity audit. So if that's something that you're, um, interested in, you can set up a time, they can audit your practice, audit some of these, uh, components, give you some great pointers. And then of course, uh, point you in the right direction. If there's anything that we could do to help you, they'll let you know. And if there's anything that we've created that can help you take those next steps to helping yourself, then the team will let you know as well. So Aaron, if you could drop that in there, awesome. That'd be great. You can schedule that. It's absolutely free. It's our way of helping you and helping the profession up level itself. But uh, who wants to share? Who wants to share from what they learned today? Any volunteers? I'm going to call on Brett because I see him front and center here. Uh, Brett, uh, go ahead and unmute, unmute yourself and, and tell us what uh, what you enjoyed most and what were some of your big takeaways today. Yeah, well, thanks for giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, I would say like the big tape, uh, takeaway for me was like when you spoke to me directly, like to get a, an example of, um, I don't know how simply you can just create that connection. And I definitely felt it in myself, you know, like, I was kind of like, my back was getting tired. I was kind of slumping back to rest. And man, it just like, it, it lit me up and energized me. So I, that was definitely my biggest takeaway. Awesome. Well, thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. And then yeah. what, what's something that you're going to incorporate into your practice uh, a little bit more that you picked up today? Well, I think like I've never asked for a review before. Like I see a lot of patients every day as a chiropractor and I'm definitely open to, um, to feedback. Um, but I don't ask for it all the time or, or regularly, even, um, there's a lot of patients I have, I've never asked once. Um, uh, and whenever somebody does offer that to me, I'm very grateful for it, but it's definitely not a practice yet. Okay. So yeah, adding that would be great. Amazing. Do you have a, um, so you have a physical practice, right? Yeah. And one of the things that we did that we found really helpful in our physical practice that could be helpful for you is we bought like a giant whiteboard mm -hmm. and, and, uh, on that whiteboard, we just wrote a message at the top. And in your case, it could say, tell Dr. Brett about your experience today. And what they could do is they, you just have different colored markers up there and then they can write what their experience was like, Yeah. right. Or a nice. little thank you note. Right. And then people start seeing that 
And then they can start seeing like the transformation, like, oh my God, my back pain is gone or this is gone. And you put that in your waiting room. So your new patients see it and they're like, oh my God, I'm totally in the right place. I and like then that. those, those can become, um, you know, video, I, I mean, sorry, those could become image testimonials, right? So you could take a picture of that and, uh, and then share that on your social media profiles and, uh, and, and, and kind of, kind of, a great organic, uh, a great organic way of, of getting people to, you know, to share their experience. Yeah, for sure. That's super nice. That's a good idea. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Anyone else want to share? Any volunteers? Thanks, Brett. Shayla, is your hand up? It is now. Go ahead and share. Oh, hi, Sachin. Also. Hey. That's a great idea. Actually, I'm going to do that now. Asking patients to write, you know, what their experience is. I hear it all the time from them. Then I forget to take the testimonials and, you know, this, um, this, this is a good idea. I, I'll ask them to write from now onwards. And um, one thing I learned today is a progress, you know. I'm focusing more on perfection. That's my problem. I know that, but I still keep doing it. Um, so now I'm going to focus more on progress and I'll just do whatever it is. It's not perfect. I'm going to do it. I'll have yeah. to see how <laughs> done done is the new perfect right and and here here's the thing it's nothing that we do is written in stone uh -huh. and and so we can always change it we can always modify it you know like especially when you're in a you're like in a technical world right if you want to make a tweak to your website or make a tweak to something you put out there you can always do that it's really easy to modify um, one thing that i remind reminds me of uh, lexus at one point they're tagline was the pursuit of perfection. So you could still pursue perfection, but just realize that it doesn't have to be perfect for you to launch it. And we could take a page out of many um, big tech playbooks, right? So if you think about, if you open up your Facebook app, I think it's on version 300 right now. Mm -hmm. So they've had over 300 updates uh, to the app. And so they're constantly tweaking and improving and taking feedback. Even if you look at uh, your phone, you'll notice that Apple just released another update. So there's a software update for our computers and a software update for our phones. They're always, you know, introducing new iOSs. So they're on, you know, iOS 15 right now. And so it's okay to do that, right? You know, I see people share their testimonials and I have so many in my desktop and I'm so afraid to share it on Facebook. You know, I don't want to look like I'm bra bragging, you know, <laughs> to the people. No, well, here's the thing. It's bragging if you're claiming to be the hero, mm -hmm. right? But if you're celebrating their win, right, as a guide, then that's a whole different perspective. So you might even say like, hey, today I want to celebrate my client, Annie, who came in to see me and we're struggling with these issues. And then throughout the story, you're acknowledging her journey, right? What she did for herself or he did for himself to, you know, to enjoy the benefits and the fruits that they're enjoying now. And you could, you could, if you approach it from a guide, you can say, Hey, I'm always happy to guide you on your journey to help you climb, you know, your, you know, the top of your health goals or whatever. So it's how we position it and, 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 um, how we write that story that changes the perspective of whether you're bragging about yourself or whether you're uh, bragging about your client. Thank you, Sachin. It's really very helpful session. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Who else wants to share? Lisa, you want to share? I'm gonna I'm gonna call on people who are who I can see on camera. And we'll take one more after Lisa and then we'll wrap things up. Oh, Sachin, again, I was just writing in the chat, just thank you so much for all your wisdom and just always, um, you know, I think what you said is over delivering. I feel like every um, session I'm with you, that over delivery. And I think that the big things for me is constantly building relationships and all the little tiny things that are really going to matter and make an impact. Remembering to focus that you're, it's the client who's the hero and um, 
And then the other thing is I've been really been for maybe about a year looking at storytelling and how to you know incorporate the storytelling again as that part of messaging that is so important how people relate to storytelling metaphors etc so again thank you you're super welcome thank you all right leslie you want to share close us out Hey, good afternoon or good morning, everybody. Um, for me today, it was really the over delivery piece as well. So I know with um, your program, when I received that personal care package, it, it just meant so much. Like I'm a single mom and you're always taking care of people. So having a gift for myself, it was just like over the top. So that really helps me, um, you know, how I'll approach my clients as well. So the over delivery for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I, I had a great time today. Uh, this is a new format that we're incorporating. And uh, I'd love to know if you enjoyed this format where it's participatory and it's more community centric. Our goal is to, is to do uh, more of these town hall kind of gatherings, get togethers on a monthly basis, because we want to keep moving everyone forward. We want to keep moving everyone um, in the right direction. And it's great to see kind of a, a mixed audience of people who are clients, people who are, you know, kind of just starting their journey, getting familiar with our, you know, our uh, offerings. And I know that this is a, a long weekend. So appreciate all of you for emphasizing your own personal and practice growth this weekend. And I uh, want to say that I'm humbled and grateful that we got to spend this time together. So have an awesome rest of your day. Happy Easter to those of you that celebrate it. And uh, there's a lot of actually big holidays that are coming together this weekend from all sorts of religions. So uh, today is uh, Hanuman Janthi, which is many of you probably know the monkey god Hanuman. And uh, so it's his birthday today. So I'll be going to the temple, see my grandmother later today. I know some of you are going to be going to church this weekend. I know there's, I think Ramadan is uh, ending this weekend as well. So there's a lot of auspicious uh, occasions that are culminating. So I know how busy everyone is. And um, thank you for tuning in, prioritizing today and, and being present. Lots of love to each and every one of you. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. All right. See you soon. Bye.